All right, welcome back. Uh, we are sitting here today with Ben, who uh, myself and Richard have known for a number of years, going back quite a way. And uh, you have uh, probably a family life that is uh, atypical to an LDS audience. Um, and your experience, as everyone's experience, is unique. So we'd like to talk to you today about uh, kind of where you are, uh, where you fall on the believer, non-believer scale, and how that... Um, may be different or the same from the rest of your family. Yeah, um, I come from a household that uh, my father was raised LDS, um, not active, mm -hmm. never really active. He was excommunicated around in his mid-twenties. So his par he wasn't active or his parents weren't active? No one was really ever okay. active. Um, so he was, uh, he sent a letter and requested to be excommunicated, went through the filing of the paperwork in his mid-twenties. Um, my mother was raised Catholic, very devout, until she moved out. In fact, she was married in Catholic Church, the one she went to, until she was 18. And once she got married and they moved out, um, she stopped being active. So I was never really raised with religion. Mm -hmm. um, never really went to church. Didn't have uh, an active... Um, God was not an active part of my life. Um, probably when I became... 13 or so mid-adolescence, uh, my mom started embracing New Age uh, religion, uh, belief in miracles, A Course in Miracles, the Blue Books, um, Deepak Chopra, stuff like that. Uh, so we had many dinner conversations. Deepak Chopra, just like, I hear the name and my eyes just roll with their own accord. So. so we had many conversations at dinner about New Age ideals and energy and you know, the positivity right. of it and stuff like that, and many fights, um, in fact. Uh, so, you were having fights with your mom, or just the family in general? My, my, my father and I, mainly, I mean, we both, I mean, saw it for what I kind of still think it is, is, you know, mumbo-jumbo bullshit. <laughs> so, w were you trying to convince your mom, you know, hey, this is... These people are just trying to get money from you, they're trying to sell you crystals in their books, or, or was it, it, it just... Just, you know, what's the purpose of believing this? It was mainly the philosophy of it mm -hmm. at the time. I mean, she wasn't actively going to any church or anything. Right. It was mainly she was buying the books and stuff like that. And she was just, I, I think it was helping her um, try to find her way with her spirituality. But like anything, you know, when you start pushing on other people, they immediately, you know, if they don't have an interest, you immediately resist. And right. my father and I were more logical thinking human beings and breaking it down and the things she was telling us. And it was just, it wasn't working. It didn't yeah. ever fit. And she'd keep trying to push it on. And that's, of course, what created debates and conversations right. and right. stuff like that. Um, so dealt with that for most of, you know, teenage years and stuff like that. Um, I probably... Uh, myself, I mean, while I never had any connection with a religion, I started praying to God myself. I'd say, you know, probably 16, 17, I'd pray every day, menial things, or just because I felt like I should. Uh -huh. um, and I actually think it was because I felt like I was getting more and more disconnected that I felt like it was something I should be doing with mm. my life. So um, I did that, you know, for a long time say up until two or so years ago, I was praying at least on a daily basis. Oh. Uh, be quick, it would be, or, you know, sometimes it'd be ten minutes. Um, you know, and I won't be afraid to say, you know, I'd do it, you know, if something bad happened, I'd be like, you know, please help me figure this out, you know, mm -hmm. get in a car wreck or something like that, and you're like, oh, shit, what am I going to do? You know, and you kind of immediately revert to something, you know, things you couldn't control, trying to find a higher power to help you. Right. right. Um, and, you know, when I went through years of depression, I did it a lot, too, there, because, you know, why seek actual medical help when <laughs> it was better to just, you know, sit and question to God why I um, couldn't do that. So, um, you know, it, it very... I think very different than a lot of people in the sense well, that, you know, no religious affiliation for most of my life. And I chose kind of God because mm -hmm. I felt like it was going to be the thing there to comfort. Do you have an idea of like what, what kind of God you were talking to? I mean, did you see it in yourself as like kind of a Mormon version or a Catholic version or just like, you know, a new, not the new age like your mother was describing, but did you have any sense of that as to like what sort of what pseudo kind of, 
like a pseudo Christian god who's all powerful yeah. and all knowing and benevolent, something like that. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of got my god from movies. It's, it's mm. as funny as that because I didn't have close religious affiliations. Mm. I didn't have the background or knowledge, so it was one of those. You know, it's like you see a book, movie like um, City of Angels, where it's mm. like, you know, the difference between angels and humans was a humans got free will. And so I went, so our God is a God that's given me free will to make my own decisions throughout life. He's never give, given me a pre-plan or anything like that. Uh -huh. But at the same time, he'll be there for me when I need him. So it was a loving God and an embracing God and a God that never would send me to hell or, you know, I could do bad things and everything else. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I, my own morals, of course, were dictating my life, so it was easier that I didn't have to, like, pick or choose that. But it was the God that I went, if I need something or if I need the support, he'll help me through. Okay, that helps. So, um, you know, in my early 20s, I got married, 22, I got married, and I actually ended up living with my brother. Um, and uh, at, at that time, he'd gone through most of his life relatively the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, he had never had any really religious affiliation. In fact, he and I had never talked about spirituality whatsoever. And around the time I moved in with him, he started attending um, an evangelical church. Mm -hmm. And at first it was, you know, he went, I think, mainly because he'd just gone through a second divorce. Mm -hmm. he'd, he'd, been, he'd been living in another state. He came back. He was trying to find, you know, friends and community right. and stuff like that. And so he kind of did it mostly for the activities. Mm -hmm. But the more he got involved... Um, you know, the deeper he got into it, uh, he started, you know, regularly having get-togethers over at his house, mm -hmm. uh, and then he started the full court press on me. So he would, uh, um, actually I've now seen, you know, on like, um, different websites, how to convert people, how to get them, you know, he played the cross game with me, and... What's the cross game? And, and, yeah. and, and I can't remember all of it, but... Um, they basically, he, he drew out like four pillars of information. And it's like okay. belief, love, uh, and something, and two others. And, right. Uh, it, it's been eight years, so right. forgive me. But, no, you're fine. So he's, he starts to rationalize things. And, and this is what I kind of get with it. You know, it's like, well, do you li believe in, you know, loving your wife? And it's like, well, of course. You know, yeah. and do you believe that people killing one another is bad? And she's like, yes. And, you know, it just goes through basic fundamentals that I think most human beings in general believe. Sure. Right. But, but there are things you can immediately relate to. Right. And once you agree to all of these things, it draws out a cross mm. in the way that it, it's laid out and everything else. He goes, so if you believe and agree with me on all of this stuff, pray with me now and, uh, you know, agree to come to church with me. And it was at that exact moment that I went, something wrong here if you know this is no different to me than like a multi-level marketing person coming well and it's so the idea was that i mean so he's he has four points there's like one here one here one here and when you yep. connect them they draw across so if that's supposed to be a convincing argument he could have done like you know 10 points and drawn a star of david yep. or he you know he could have done uh two points and done two lines but do the the moon that seems to represent islam like that's in what way is that really a convincing argument? You know, it's like you played connect the dots. What, no, and, and what that, does that prove? And you know? that's when it hit me. It hit me immediately. I went, there's something wrong here. I feel like I'm being sold something rather than I'm buying into a belief. Mm -hmm. Right. And I got up from the table and I wouldn't pray, from him, pray with him. Right. And he, of course, did not like that. And we had a bit of a discussion, but I left. Wait, you, you, you went to pray with him and he didn't like that? I wouldn't pray with him. Hmm. I would not pray with him okay. um, because I went, I feel like I've just been sold something. I feel like I'm about to sign up for Amway, right. and this is not... I don't want the extended warranty. Th yeah. th th this was not syncing with my ideals that I had put in my own mind about God. This was not syncing with what I thought or anything else, and I went, there's something wrong here. So... You know, as the years have progressed, he's tried many different ways, many different techniques to do this to both me and my parents and the rest of the family. And, um, you know, we've all resisted it. My mother still, to some extent, believes into some of our New Age stuff. Um, but, I mean, that 
when he did that, that I would say was the start of my beginning to question a god, religions in general, mm -hmm. and such. Because of the way he tried to do it. Because of the way he tried to do it. I mean, since I, you know, the extent of my religion at that point is um, I'd actually had to go through classes to get married into the cathedral. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I had to spend a, a weekend um, in in a church, and we had to spend overnight going through classes there, and then... And this was because... If I remember correctly, because your wife was Catholic, and in order to get married in the Cathedral of the Madeline, um, you had to go through a certain amount of, of in, uh, uh, like Catholic catechism classes. Yes. And and didn't if I remember correctly, you had to promise to raise any children you had Catholic and, and things like that. That's correct. Okay. Just so, just for the benefit of, of the people who aren't familiar with this story. But no, that explains I, I, my sister's situation. Why she's <laughs> still in the church? I and, right. And and you're right. And I'm sorry. I'm. I'm no, it's all right. A little bit, yeah. but. So yeah, so my, my experience with religion at that point is my wife and I had to do for probably about two or three months, every weekend we had to go do classes, mm -hmm. and then one weekend we actually had to spend the night in a church, or spend a weekend in a church going through classes. And, and those were actually beneficial, the, the weekend, because it was less about religion, it was more about, you know, what, what are your plans with your finances? Are you going to share them? Mm -hmm. Are you going to keep them separate? You know, what are your plans? You know, do you both want kids? Do you not? So that stuff was all helpful, but the 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 week to week stuff was mostly religion and mostly mm -hmm. committing to if you're going to have kids, they need to be raised Catholic. You know, we had to go to to church for those couple months to prove that we were serious and to get the church to get the cathedral to sponsor us to allow us mm -hmm. into it. Um, so that had been my only experience, and, and even that was less of selling to me like at no point in that did they ever try to get me to get baptized than one evening that I spent with my brother mm -hmm. but you know even then I went okay something about this is wrong mm -hmm. you know I, I don't feel like it should be such a hard sale to get me to believe in God or yeah, it should just believe be a in this presentation stuff. of evidence and you're like oh okay so we always have to play a game yeah and it, it and, you know, a game where I left, you know, my brother and I had never had a very close relationship, but we it improved dramatically since he had come back, and that at that point it kind of it started the fissure. Mm -hmm. um, at that point I went, there's just something wrong here. So, um, as the years have gone by, you know, he's continued to push uh, his faith upon the rest of the family. Um, he's, he's a very devoted evangelical. Um, you know, he's gone so far as to go out in public and speak and hand out pamphlets. Mm -hmm. Street preaching. Street preaching. Right. Um, you know, worked with some of the bigger evangelicals, Ray Comfort, Kirk Cameron. Really? Yes. He's done TV shows and videos and stuff with them. Wow. Um, and uh, even has his own TV show. Um, I was not aware of all of these. Uh, and the more he pushed, and the more I started to pay more attention to God, was the more I became less interested in... At first, it was his God. At first, I went, well, I don't agree with his God. Why? What, what was it about his, his God that you found disagreeable? Um, th this whole notion that everything is black or white. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you are either devoted to Jesus or you're going to hell. You know, this whole thing, everything is either good or bad. Mm -hmm. You know, abortion's wrong, there are no exceptions. You know, a crime is a crime, no matter what. Th stealing is bad, no matter what. And, then, and, and I don't think you can ever say those types of things. Because you can say, stealing is bad no matter what, and then the first thing that comes to mind, what if somebody's stealing a loaf of bread for their starving right. family? it's the classic. Yeah, right. you know, and, and you start to just start poking holes in every single thing. And he was never willing to discuss the gray areas, ever. I tried so many times to go, you know, I'm trying to wrap my hands around it. I'm even looking to embrace this to a certain extent because I was trying to find my way. Right. Explain these things to me. And it was always, no, it's just black or white. Right. You know, if you stare at another woman lustfully, you're cheating on your wife. It's like, well, then everybody's screwed. Yeah. You know? Well, that's, I, I, I've often thought that's largely the idea of Christianity is that you have to make what it is to be human wrong because everybody has to 
need uh, the, the cure that Christianity provides. Yeah. Like, if you only say that, well, like, uh, it's, it's, it's sinful to be a man, well, then women get off scot-free. No, you have to make sexuality, you have to make it, whatever it is innate to humans, that's what has to be wrong, because everybody has to qualify. Yeah. yeah, everyone has to have the need. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so the more and more conversations I had with him about these things, and the, you know, the more I, I actually would feel bad about myself and feel bad about things in general, and then I would watch him completely contradict his own statements. Mm. You know, he, he, he preached so hard on, if you stare at another woman lustfully, you're cheating on your wife. And I'd watch, you know, a girl would bend over, and he, his eyes would be the first before ours. <laughs> you know, and, you know, uh, he, he'd get, like, uh, his new phone, an Android, and he would, uh, he'd get pirated apps for it, and he continued to download pirated games and movies. And I just, I, I watched all these different things, and I'm going... So I wasn't doing any of this stuff before, and I didn't have religion, and I didn't have a connection to God, and I fully acknowledge that these things are wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's embraced God and embraced religion and does all of these things, and that just pushed me even further away. Um, you know, and then I, I watch my friends, um, you know, who have all either come to terms with their own religions or, you know, have become atheists and stuff like that, and they're much more moral, much better human beings you know, better to me than my brother ever was, uh -huh. you know, willing to drive me to the airport if I need it, come get me, help me out, do things, you know, we were all willing to, we were a closer-knit community as non-believers than anybody I'd ever met as believers. You know, it seemed like even with my brother's friends and all of these believers, there was always, you know, well, I'll do something for you if you do something for me. Yeah. You know, there it seemed to be there always... Yeah, I'll do this for you, but you got to help me next week, and mm -hmm. I'll do. The, you know, there was always something in it for them. Uh huh. And now, this has always been a really funny aspect um, of, I guess, the morality of Christianity to me. Uh, um, you know, because I remember we were watching, I think, Monday Night Football somewhere once, and your brother was showing me and telling me this pirated app that he had. It was some kind of uh, NFL app for the phone, and it was. Three bucks or ten bucks, I, I don't know. But I know you had to pay for it. And he had uh, a hacked version that he was using for free. And, you know, I kind of got this this idea. And it's not the only place I've, I've seen this in the realm of evangelical Christians. It's sort of like, well, I can do whatever sin I want because Jesus is going to forgive me. Jesus died and, you know, I'm human and I'm already sinful. And, and so it's like... It's like, I can do whatever I want, and I'm already forgiven, and it, it doesn't matter. It's, well, you have to ask for forgiveness. But that's all he has to do. And right. it, it's, it's always been funny to me. Like, here's the thing. If I stab you right now, the thing to do is not to go down on my knees and apologize to Jesus and ask him to forgive me for the sin of attacking you. The thing to do is take you to the hospital and get you stitched up and apologize and then ask if there's anything I can do... For recompense of this wrong, I, I I wronged you. Yeah. I didn't wrong Jesus. I, I wronged you. But this this Christian attitude of whenever you do a sin, you're actually wronging God, who told you not to sin. That's um, it's baffling to That's me. Point. Actually, yeah. So the idea is, if as a Christian, if I stab you in the leg right now, it's not really you I have to apologize to. Not really. I mean, yeah. they would probably say, well, yeah, you should apologize to God, but you should also apologize to the person you hurt. But that's like, um, it's it's just it's a bit of cognitive dissonance to me. You, you just reminded me of a great argument I made with him, actually. So I said to him, because he said, you know, if you just accept Jesus into your heart and pray for forgiveness, mm -hmm. you know, you will be absolved of your sins and you'll go to heaven. And so I, I once asked him when I started thinking about it more, I said, what about if somebody who lives most of their life horribly? They kill people, they rape people, they do all of this stuff. But near the end, they embrace Jesus and accept him. Well, they go to heaven. He said, well, of course. I said, so then what's the, what incentive do I have to live a good and moral life by the teachings of the Bible when just near the end or at any point I can just do a forgiveness? And he goes, well, that's the easy way out. I said, but you still haven't given me an argument as to why I couldn't do it. 
and isn't, you know, and that even to me became a little bit of, isn't that unfair? So this person can do all these horrible things, pray for forgiveness and, and get accepted into heaven, and I live a good life. It's like, I don't want to be in the same room as somebody who was that horrible. And, you know, why would I want to go up to a world that, you know, all these criminals are like, yeah, I accepted <laughs> Jesus into my heart. Ignore the fact that I was a horrible human being my entire life. You know, it created more holes. It created more issues. And he could never give me a valid argument for that. And that was huge to me because I went, there seems to be a big disconnect if you're telling me I should live my life a certain way. But, oh, by the way, I don't really have to as long as I accept Jesus at some point and pray for yeah, forgiveness. The, the, the idea of, of redemption and punishment in Christianity has, <clears throat> has nothing to do with justice. The, the idea, an argument that I hear a lot is that well, if there's no God, then, you know, Hitler's not really getting punished for all the awful things that he did. But the idea that Hitler in his last seconds could have accepted Jesus and been forgiven, that has nothing to do with justice. Well, and ignoring the fact that he actually was religious and Catholic? Roman Catholic? Yeah, he, he, uh, uh, like no, that? he had trained to be a Catholic priest, but that's, uh -oh. that's, I mean, and there's plenty of Christians who will, who will tell you that Catholics are not real Christians, so, I mean, that's an argument unto itself. But this idea that, like, well, God is a just God, and that's why if you don't accept Jesus, you have to go to hell, because our natures are sinful and we're getting punished for that. But again, it, it is this idea that you could be horrible and repent at the last minute, and get into heaven. That has nothing to do with the, the whole concept of hell. Uh, there's nothing about it. Yeah. Uh, and even then, infinitely punishing someone for finite crimes is, is a ridiculous idea anyway. But, so, but even then, what's so Christian, even all the bad things Hitler did, what's so Christian about, well, he's not being punished for all eternity. You know, this obsession with punishment and redemption, mm -hmm. and it seems to really, really go hand in hand with Christianity. People want other people to be punished for what they did. You know, people always talk about the, you know, do not cast the first stone. Right. And they, they re reference that very often. But at the same time, I constantly see, particularly Christians, wanting to see other people punished. Look at how good I am. Make sure this person is punished for not being as good as I am. Um, I, I watched it in my brother's community very frequently. You know, amongst the people, it's like, Look at how good I am. Look at how much better I am at this than you are. Mm -hmm. Look at how much more spiritual I am. Look at how much more giving. You know, they, he he um, he actually went and traveled to um, where where the uh, now now I'm having a blank uh, Haiti Haiti. He went he went and traveled to Haiti, you know, to help rebuild houses and stuff there, and it was like. You know, you knew immediately he didn't want to go and rebuild houses. He didn't really want to go and do something. He wanted to be able to put on his Facebook and tell his other friends, I went to Haiti. See, I'm trying to help. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I found that very interesting. He, yeah. actually, he actually ran into Sean Penn there while Sean Penn was there doing things. And I think that was very hard for him to see this guy who really doesn't didn't have a lot of religion, I mean, wasn't there for any religious purpose, is clearly the opposite, leaning politically and everything else of him, actually doing and contributing <laughs> all of these things. Right. And in fact, he did say, you know, he, he has now mixed feelings about Sean Penn. And it's like, you need to understand, People do good things because they want to do good things. It's like Brad Pitt going to New Orleans uh, uh, over and over again, even though Brad Pitt is like a he's like super atheist guy. And he went and he would bring blankets and, and he would help clear rubble. And in fact, to the point where people started jokingly saying that Brad Pitt should run for uh, like mayor, mayor of New Orleans, uh, of New Orleans yeah. or something like that. And, and he actually made that he, he kind of joked about it. He's like, I can't be mayor, I'm an atheist. Because everybody knows like what a death sentence it is on a political career if, if, yeah. if you don't avow some kind of faith at least, yeah. and uh, that's actually an interesting point. The the uh, I, that is funny to me that your brother met someone who's I don't know if Sean Penn is an atheist, but the idea that he's kind of in that same vein, you know, Sean Penn is is you know liberal and all that kind of stuff, and for that to be like, oh, I didn't realize people who didn't believe as I do can do good things. Yeah. That's well, actually kind of funny to me. Bill Gates, who I, I don't know if he's ever come out as an atheist, but he's he definitely has. been very non-religious, mm -hmm. you know, has contributed more money than anybody, than most countries, 
to to helping other people to you know de dealing with the dirty water or lack of water in Africa, curing malaria. I think they've said he single-handedly has done more for malaria in like the last three years than all of research combined. I would put that on my tombstone. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, this is a cool thing to be able to say, an impressive thing. I am malaria's, uh, you know, arch enemy. Th there's a joke, you know, because Apple's got the whole Foxconn factory and it's like buying an Apple product contributes to the suicide of human beings in China. Buying a Windows product contributes to curing malaria. Right. <laughs> You know, but you look at things like this and people tend to forget it. It's like Warren Buffett, who, again, is going to donate all of his money, you know, his $50 billion to the Bill Gates Foundation, which will continue to trickle out to all these people. You know, it's a lot of the non-religious people who are doing these things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it, people think, and I had the same problem, that morality is tied to religion. And it was it was Christian, and it was Eric, and you know it was these guys talking to me, making me realize morality and religion have never been tied together. Mm -hmm. You know, your morals are either you know some people will say you're born with a certain idea of right and wrong. Some people say you get them from your uh, parents, society, whatever. But at some point, you develop. You know when you're doing harm to another person or to right. yourself, mm -hmm. something like that. The basic things in your mind, you know, short of mental illness, you know what's right and what's wrong. And, you know, you know when you're doing a good thing for a friend, and you, you know when you want to do these things, regardless of if you're going to have, if it's going to be some benefit to you. Yeah. But to act like, because I don't have a belief in, at least in any specific higher power that I've seen to date, or the ones that are derived from the Bible, doesn't mean that I don't know, you know, to do the right things for other human beings. Yeah. So, as as your brother sort of continued his uh, uh, quest to um, convert the family, your, you and your parents, and uh, perhaps anyone else within reach, um, when his arguments sort of uh, weren't holding sway, um, what was his next step? Yelling. Yelling? Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, it, 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 it's it's interesting, but yeah, it turned immediately into personal attacks, saying we've lived purposeless lives mm -hmm. was the key one mm -hmm. um, that still, um, you know, I think hurts certain members of the family because, you know, they take it to heart, but it said st would state stuff like that. Um, you know, just kind of an overall air of superiority, and it's like, well, you know, uh, it's... One of those things where it's like, we know we're doing the right thing, we know you're not, and so, you know, get to the point where, well, if you don't accept the right way, then you're just you're just being silly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it hurt for a little bit. I think the bigger problem, and as it, it continues to arrive, is my brother has several kids. He has four kids, mm -hmm. and they've been told that Grandpa and Grandpa, Grandpa and Grandma and Uncle Ben and his wife are going to hell. So... Wow. So we've had it before where they'll come over crying and they're like, you're going to hell, how are we supposed to cope with it? It's like, you know, you have, you, you have to balance this, you know, statement of, if we flat out go, you know, we think your, your parents are wrong in this, we probably won't have access to those kids. Right. So you have to find a way of, we don't necessarily think the same way your parents do. Mm. and try to explain it to them on a base level, but all they think is, you know, they continue to be told how horrible hell is, and now they're telling they're, they're being told their most beloved family members are going to hell. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's even more of a worse part than, you know, what he's done to me or my parents or anything else is, you know, the psychological effects that you're going to have on your child. Mm -hmm. and, and I brought it up with him before, and he's like, well, do you want me to lie to them? And it's kind of like, well, yeah, I think right yeah. now you are lying to them, but that, you know, that's of course the difference. Yeah, that's the, yeah that's, that's the difference. Um, wow, that's that's interesting to me. I, uh, one of the things that we had talked about in previous weeks is um, my grandmother converted uh, to Judaism uh, before I was born, uh, right around the time my parents got married. Um, and so when I was little, I had this concept of my, when my grandmother dies because she doesn't accept the divinity of Jesus, she's going to go to hell. But man, I never showed up to her crying, you know, because I uh, uh, was so upset that that was going to happen to her. I can't imagine 
grandkids, uh, um, or or a niece coming. I mean, he must really pound it into their heads. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. The reason you didn't have that was because you didn't have your parents being right. Like, Grandma's gonna burn. Oh yeah, she's no, gonna, it was other she's people. Go talk to grandma because she's gonna fry, and if you don't, right? Let her know and I mean, that. and what an emotional uh, twist of the knife to to upset to, and I can't say that he did this knowing this is how it would go down, but to to be able to upset your children to the level where they would go see family members and cry, and and be like, I'm so <coughs> worried about you. I mean, how. How dare you use your children like that? Well, I was going to say, based on, on what he described as far as the cross game situation, I mean, it sounds intentional. And he just basically turned his children into weapons of conversion. And, and, and I would I would agree with you on that. Um, he's tried multiple ways of, you know, getting it through. Um, he's He gave up on me a, a probably... I mean, fully gave up on me a little over six or seven months ago. I, I tried to disconnect myself from him. Uh -huh. I went to him very calmly and rationally, and I said, our relationship is no longer working. We do not see eye to eye. We are not even close to the same level. I am an atheist. Um, a lot of your the way that you have approached things has led me down this path, which could tell hit him very hard, but it, it was the truth. Uh -huh. I said, we cannot have a relationship anymore. And he, of course, started to play the game with me of, well, then you have no access to my children. Because mm -hmm. he knew that would hurt me, and he knew that I would want to. And I said, that would make me very sad. That would hurt my feelings, but I cannot have a relationship with you anymore. It is too volatile. It does me no benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and it hurts the family. And it, this has been a very difficult decision to come to, and my parents were we're not in agreement of it because they still want to do the Christmas, you know, get togethers and Thanksgiving and stuff like that. But I had reached a point where emotionally I couldn't function anymore with right. him. Um, and so he, he actually reached out and made a very, very uh, genuine effort of, you know, what can I do? What can I do? And I finally said, you know, we, if we're going to have a relationship, we can no longer have a discussion of religion or politics whatsoever. Yeah. They can't even be mentioned. And since then, I mean, thus far it's gone well. But he still pushes my parents on a regular basis. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he has more invested there because my parents see those kids anywhere from one to five times a week. So they do have quite a bit of an influence on his children. And mm -hmm. he, he likes the fact that he, they do that because, you know, A, the grandparents are involved, but B, they do a lot of babysitting so he mm -hmm. can go and do his street preaching and his TV show and do right. his other things and um, everything else, so they really facilitate a lot of it, but, you know, at the same time, they continue to not believe into in his things, and I, that continues to be a, a problem, because they want him to, you know, they want it all. They want to be able to have the grandparents come over and have embraced everything. Mm -hmm. And they've actually convinced my brother's wife, um, her parents have now joined, you know, an, an evangelical oh. church and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So they just... In their minds, they're just a, they're a mere step away from one big happy family. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to back up just a little bit and mention kind of like how kind of tragic it is, though, for your your brother because of the fact that it's like your brother's almost unintentionally being this rigid and kind of this much of an ass. I mean, you have to think about it sometimes from the the, the bad the religion does and how it has affected your brother. Because it's because this religion has browbeaten him into thinking this way that he then does it to the children and things like mm -hmm. that. I mean, there is an aspect of where his actions are almost not his own because of the fact that he's been... He had bought into it. Where you did not believe in, in, in this idea that this this is the way to God and all that, he did. And so it is a little tragic from his standpoint where he really feels that you yeah, know, in his head, he thinks pain. he's doing the yeah, right thing. You're yeah. absolutely right. In his head, he truly believes what he's doing is the correct thing. Yeah, He truly fears for his family and the exactly. rest of us, and he thinks what he's doing is the right thing. Uh, and, and, I, and I agree with you a point that the religion has pushed it in, but at the same time, you know, he's a well-educated human being. Mm -hmm. He was raised in a relatively liberal household that did not have religion in it. It's like, I, 
I give him some leeway to a fault, and then I go, okay, at some point you have to stop and think for yourself. Well, and I agree, and that's, and I'm not trying to, like, alleviate no. him of all, you know, responsibility, but it is that, that fact of, like, I'm just mentioning it as far as, like, if we didn't have the religious aspect at all beating down on him, what kind of person would he be now? You know, how different right. would, would this situation be? How different would that family unit be? You know, it's it's just an interesting. I just want to add that side note. Uh, no, it's it's definitely. I mean, that. it's it's had an effect on him too. Clearly, mm -hmm. it. Uh, you know, he he is in a sense the same as his children. He might not cry, but he's worried for the idea that his his parents and his brother are going to suffer hell for all eternity because you know his God is a monster, so um, who infinitely punishes people for finite crimes. Um, you know, so so you're right. I mean, definitely there there's an aspect of that, but you know, Ben's just, also yeah. right. He is at some point. I agree. Uh, you know, uh, at fault for his actions. I just wanted to identify that. So no, that, definitely, you know, it's not like just his his brother is through and through like a bad person for all this. There there's that aspect of where the religion has done its harm. And, no, and, you're you're and, absolutely and, right. Um, I. I I, I think my brother is inherently a good human being. I think his he means well, but it misdirected intentions, and mm -hmm. that 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 is the the fault to, of a degree to the religion. It's like he wants to do good. He wants his family to do well. You know, he wants to bring you know some sense of morality and peace to to his own household, but he's confused on how to do it, and what he's been given probably aren't the correct tools. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, you know, the tools have been so incorrect that, I mean, he really pushed me towards atheism in general. The more he pushed hard on me, the more I started to research God in general, the more I started to have more insight about it. Because, you know, before I was just, I would pray, I, you know, my God was a happy God that, you know, sometimes I sought out for insight and stuff like that. But the more he started pushing God on me, the more it forced me to go, okay, I need to think about God right. in general. I need to think about, okay, let's look at the Catholics' God. You know, let's let, let's look at, you know, Baptists and, and my brothers and all these different gods. And the more I started doing research about it and the more I started talking to other people, I couldn't find the good God that I had always idealized. Mm -hmm. There was no writings of this. There was no creation of it. You know, there was discussion creation of it by other human beings like me in the sense that we wanted to be happy-go-lucky but you know there was there was no foundation for this ever really created uh -huh. you know it was well yeah there's a happy and loving god as long as you follow these guidelines and if you don't well you know the horror is going to be upon you oh right. and you and you might be tested and that's the other thing you know th this idea of if i do something good god blesses me if i do something bad god isn't punishing me god is testing me you know i, I could i could never come to grips with it and the more i thought about it and the more i started putting you know things together the more i went i don't have a logical reason to believe in any of these gods mm -hmm. Um, I, I have no reason to follow any of these gods. It's of no benefit or help to me to follow these gods. Uh, I need to seek a different way. Um, did the prayer have anything to do with, with that kind of realization as well? Like, did you, did you have any identification as you were, you know, the last few years, say, that you were praying as far as the fact that, like, none of it was really coming true? Or did you find, like any actual value like looking back on it did you find any real value to the prayer or something that you could maybe even claim as supernatural or did you just get that like um you know warm fuzzy from like uh you know inner inner monologue like having the the meditation aspect of it it was the warm fuzzy from having the inner monologue and so i still have the inner monologues but now i don't have a to anybody uh, it was the accepting of personal responsibility that was the hardest thing mm -hmm. of all that's and Chris and I have had this discussion several times of realizing that your life is your own, your mistakes are your own, you have to take responsibility for your mistakes, you have to take, you know, good and bad, everything is your own. That was really hard. It seems like, now it seems so simple and it seems like a very logical revelation, mm -hmm. but for so long going, you know, good or bad when I wake up tomorrow, it's what I do and what I make of it. And if when the bad comes, I've got to accept, roll with it, and figure out ways to fix it. That was the hardest thing 
ever for me to finally come to grips with. Hmm. Removing that aspect of God, so to speak, from my life was was really the, one of the last vestiges that I hang, hung on to until I finally was willing to come out. I mean, for so long I was at least, you know, I w would fight and rally it. Well, you know, I still have a belief in mm -hmm. higher power and, you know, I still do it. But it's like everything had been torn about. The foundation had been destroyed already, but I didn't want to take that personal responsibility because it's scary. And that's, that's something I actually wanted to ask you about because we talked with, with Eric about this a little bit and, um, this wasn't, I think, as big an issue for myself or for you, talking to you, but um, because for a long time, when you and I would talk about stuff, um, and we would sort of discuss like what you believe and why and what justification you have, you know, and I remember this period of sort of everything was gone, but you're, you were still kind of giving me this answer. I thought of, uh, well, you know, it, it comforts me to think that there's a God or something like that. I, I want to know, how hard was it the first time you used the word atheist? Like, when you would come to grips with it and you were like, yeah, I, I really don't believe anymore. Like, was that difficult to say to people or even to yourself? Yes, it was very hard. It was really hard the first time, and I can't... I think I said it to Michelle, and it, it, we were having a discussion, I can't remember about what, but the first time, it, it was one of those things where it stuck in the throat mm -hmm. for a minute, mm -hmm. and it was the realization of, oh my God... I don't believe in God. I don't yeah. believe in God. Holy, you know, this is, it was really, it, it was very difficult. Now, it when was, you said it to your wife, Michelle, did you worry that was going to have an effect on your relationship? I did. Maybe? I, I worried it was going to have an adverse effect. Um, she still has some tie to spirituality. Um, it's been waning, um, but, you know, she still, she went through, you know, 20 plus years of Catholics, private Catholic school and church so mm -hmm. it's been a little bit harder and um but yeah i did i didn't know how she was going to take it i didn't know how she was going to embrace it um i then took it to my parents um my mother still doesn't fully embrace well she doesn't acknowledge it to much degree at all the, the, you're atheist yes um my, like my mother my father just came out last week um and declared himself so i i Wow. Um, Your so, brother must be pissed. <laughs> my, my father has not told my brother and probably never will. Um, ah. Unless, you know, they watch or see this through some other way. Um, so, But that's the standpoint of your father, probably, I'm assuming, doesn't want to say it because he doesn't want to lose access to his grandchildren. You know, which I can understand. And that's, that's I think, uh, a decision everybody has to make for themselves. Because you have to... They just did a study not that long ago where atheists are apparently, we are on the trustworthiness scale, we are equal to I rapists. And um, that being the most disliked minority in the United States, that, you know, you have to consider what kind of effect that's going to have with like, oh, well, uh, now you don't get to see your grandchildren or, you know, whatever the consequence may be. I mean, that's, everybody has to come to that on their own and that's... I mean, I can I can absolutely understand. I just wanted to remind you that religion brings us together. I don't know if you know right. That. No, it definitely doesn't compartmentalize <laughs> us into us and them mentality. No. But there's a great point to be made about that. Uh, for a long time, I didn't have uh, I, I had a private Facebook account. I used an alias, as you both know, mm -hmm. and just barely recently I went back. I just to recently it. learned that, by the way, yeah. like two weeks ago. <laughs> he had no, I idea, had no idea who, who that who name Steve was. was. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you had. It, Except I thought it was a friend shed. of his that I, I had conversations with and I'd enjoy, but I didn't know, I had no idea. Mysterious friend. He just <laughs> barely told me, like, literally two weeks ago. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. So, so, um, so I went back to my own, and uh, I changed my religious affiliation, one of the first things I did, to atheist. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm relatively certain that my brother's wife noticed um, because I immediately, we had a family event, and she didn't say two words to me the entire time while I was mm. there. Um, and those two words were not very nice words. <laughs> so it, it is, it's one of those things where it's like, you you know, in in that family sense, it's, a, it's scary to bring it up. Uh, you know, but even in a world sense, I just now told some of my colleagues um, when I was at my sales conference last week that I'm atheist. Um, you know, and it's... At first, I was a little afraid, you know, by it, but I, I don't think my 
lack thereof religious affiliation or belief should be embraced any differently than me accepting somebody being a Catholic, Episcopalian, mm -hmm. it's everything else, you know. I've always been somebody who's tolerated anybody who believed whatever they wanted as long as they could provide, you know, why they believe it, and that's fine. But, or just don't stuff it down your or, throat. Yeah, and don't stuff it down my throat. Um, so I now f have been getting to that point where I'm comfortable enough to go about and tell other people what I believe. And mm -hmm. it, it was, f or what I don't believe. Right. Um, you know, and it was. It was very difficult for a long time to A, come to grips with it, then B, once it came out, you know, it's kind of... It, it, I, I don't, I think it's unfair to even, you know, try to compare to somebody coming out of the closet, but in a lot of ways it's like coming up, coming, going against the social norms. Yeah. And you do, in a way, have to, you know, explain and justify yourself. And most people, um, particularly where we live, you know, do not welcome and embrace sure. such ideals. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the foundation of the state is completely contradictory to that. Right, and the, the problem, I think, that, and this might be why atheists are so poorly regarded, I think, um, when you say to someone, I am an atheist, the, I mean, the definition of that is someone who rejects the claims that there are gods, basically, um, that's sort of the, the short of it, um, and when you say that to someone who is very religious, you are saying to them, or the way they're taking it, at least, is that hey, that thing that you base your life on that helps you understand how you think of the universe and the way things are supposed to be, it's wrong because yeah. I don't accept it. And you accept something that I find to be faulty and you have probably based your life and your understanding of the world on it. And it is, it's not intended to be an insult, but it's sort of innately insulting. But, but to that point, isn't the difference between you know someone being... Um, Catholic and another person being a Jew. But you would think so. Thing. But you know what? You know what the difference. The difference is, is that when you say I accept that there are some spiritual things, it's like if I'm Muslim and you're Jewish, um, it's like I'm saying, yeah, some spiritual thing exists. I just think you got it wrong. But it's in the realm of my possibility. Right. When you tell them you're an atheist, I'm saying all that stuff. That's on a shelf over there, and I am not giving it any credence, mm -hmm. and I am not even considering it a possibility. That's true. So, and I, I think that's, you had had a conversation um, that you should talk about, you were in a bar. Oh, yeah. Uh, with, you were speaking oh, with yeah. someone who was Jewish, and, and I found, he had, um, when he found out you were an atheist, I thought he, he said to you a very interesting thing. Which um, was... God, I'm actually... You have to remind me the exact phrasing that he uh, gave. He had told you... He, oh, no, he said, he said that's the one position that I can't, under, that I can't accept or right. can't understand. And that's, that's it. Because we were talking... Because he was, he was completely white, no Jewish lineage whatsoever. He obviously was raised like Catholic or something like that. And he was... God, the guy was like seven foot tall. He was like G.I. Joe. He, he was the ultimate soldier. And he was actually a soldier. And um, somehow... His tour was somewhere in the Middle East, and because of that relation to Islam and, and whatever, he actually became Jewish. I don't know how that all worked out, but he was in an area that also had a lot of the Jewish-Islamic so you know, conflict. And Jerusalem he, or the West, or Jerusalem or the West he, Bank or whatever. I want to say he was actually in Jerusalem at some point. But the point is, he had had some contact yeah, with Yeah, so he with became Judaism. Jewish. So he mm -hmm. made a full conversion. And it was really interesting. We were, we, we'd been playing pool for like an hour and just talking forever about religion. And, and it just kept going. And he was just so fascinating to me because of his story of how he felt you know Judaism was correct and, and, and his religious views. But when, when it finally turned to my turn and I was just, my answer was, I'm atheist, he like lost his shit. Like he, he just shut down. And the, the hour of like us just shooting pool and having drinks and being so friendly and, you know, just like bonding was immediately cut. That was over. Because, yeah. because he's like, oh, that's the one, that's the one thing. And it wasn't just that he didn't just, just say it like, oh, that's the one thing I don't understand. It was like, no, that's the one thing I don't understand. You walk away from this table. Like, that was the way it was said. It was yeah. done. We, we, the bond was broken, and, and we couldn't be friends because mm. we had a different stand. And it wasn't because, you know, if I had been Mormon, then it'd be like, okay, whatever. But right. that was the one thing he couldn't he couldn't. And no, and I think that, that, that's, that story, you having told me that before, is kind of how 
uh, I formulated the opinion. No, it's like you're saying all that stuff. It, it's not even in the realm of possibility for me, and they're insulted by that, yeah. which is um, not my problem. No, so it, it, it's it's really not. Um, you know, I uh, when when I had this discussion with work colleagues last week, one of them his his it, a guy his wife is actually an Episcopalian preacher. Mm -hmm. She actually went to. Um, I can't remember. She went to a very religious school. She's gotten a master's. I think she even had a PhD in religion. So she's very religious stuff like that. And then the other one was a was a Catholic, um, relatively um, relatively devout at least to his group. So I just said, you know, I'm an atheist. Um, the guy whose wife is an Episcopalian preacher, he kind of already we'd had previous discussions, totally accepting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The Catholic guy. Um, interestingly enough, didn't um, disregard me. He actually started to defend his position, his religion. He's like, well, I'm not really Catholic. Um, I just really enjoy the community I'm around. Mm -hmm. He's like, I was not raised Catholic. I was not born Catholic. The, the neighborhood I got in was a very Catholic neighborhood. They were very welcoming and embracing of us. Um, and we then met the priest, and we really liked him, so we started going. And so that's how I became Catholic. And I said, you know, so how do you feel about some of the Pope's beliefs and, you know, the myriad of issues? He goes, well, my priest doesn't really believe in those, and we don't really believe in them. I said, so then can you really call yourself Catholic? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, probably not in that sense. And I said, so what if your community was a different religion? He goes, I probably would have joined whatever it is. I'm a group of these, I'm with these people, mm -hmm. we carpool together, you know, we'll cook dinners together, we do lots yeah. of barbecues, we get together quite often. It's the group, not the religion. But it was very interesting to me that, you know, rather than a, an immediate uh, disregard of my statement, it was more um, almost a, an immediate defense of his. Mm. So I think you also get that, too, you know, sure. uh, of the, well, I need to, you know, explain to you how mine's different than everybody else's. Right. But I like how freely he apparently admits <coughs> to you that what he was interested in was community barbecues and carpools and... You know, it's like I went in the very first episode, I talked about the thing that I liked about when I used to go to church was that after the service, we had coffee cake and juice and coffee, and the adults talked, and the children ran around and played, and that was what was awesome to me about church, was the community. And um, so really, uh, it's become clear to me that if we could organize, uh, you know, a bi-weekly barbecue in the park and bring coffee cake, we could bring the Mormon church crashing down. <laughs> uh, how are we on time? I think we're about where we think about wrapping it up. Okay, so um, we are possibly going to invite you back in the future, I think, I because to you back. are... Any final points before we go? Um, you know, I think we all need to figure out what we want in our own lives and not continue to worry about what other people think or where we should be or where somebody thinks we should be. That's okay. an excellent point. Well, you've been a charming guest, and thank you for that. And uh, so perhaps more of Ben in the future. Uh, but for now, Outcasts out.